idol culture is toxic. It always begins with the sweetest of intentions. Tiny Timmy only wants someone to look up to. There's no way there can be anything wrong with something that innocent. Or so you would think. And yet, idol culture always ends up being any creator's worst nightmare. In some cases, it could even be career ending. What prompted this video was a more recent controversy coming from Hololife Suise. She got caught in, I kid you not, a boyfriend scandal. The fact that this exists as a concept is worrisome, to say the least. But as much as that gives a chuckle, it exemplifies a much deeper rooted problem within the creator community, the torturous relationship of the parasocial fan and the false idol. The problems with idol culture can boil down into three main reasons, but we do need to set the table. So I speak on how it's bad, but what is idol culture? To give the most bare bones definition, idol culture refers to the cult-like tendencies surrounding superstars, K-pop stands who stalk their idols, or those people who oddly know everything about Taylor Swift. Idols themselves are most commonly found in Japan, Korea, and China, but Westerners aren't free from having theirs pop up here and there. In these Asian countries, groups or individual idols exist as cloud farming machines. It's at its most brutal in Korea, with many idols entering something called idol school, as young as 8 years old. There, they begin training on how to be the perfect representation of a person in Asian spaces. It seems like a tall barrier to entry, but fret not, VTubers don't have to do this. Corona did not have to go through the trenches. Because of this meticulous upbringing, it's hard to not like them. They seem perfect in every single way. They are the most perfect rendition of a person you can see yourself in, something to strive for. But the starry-eyed glamour isn't the only thing that gives idols any level of success. A big part of what makes them successful is the sense of community and belonging they provide. The sense of having a traditional community within most of Asia is leaps and bounds stronger than here in the West. Society now, welcome to your nightmare. Welcome to your nightmare. This sets the stage for idols who act as an avatar for the community they serve. And set the stage it does, because the numbers don't lie. Idol types are very profitable. As of September 2023, the group TWICE grossed $54 million. A single member of BTS, Suga, made $60 million. Blackpink grossed $150 million. This beating out Drake by nearly $8 million. Extending that into the VTuber scene, back during the end of November 2021, Dexterto even reported that of the top 10 most super chatted streamers, 9 were VTubers. 8 of those 9 were Hololive idols. Now you might be a little bit confused about what sets an idol apart from anyone else. They seem like talent groups who focus on public relations and marketing. How might this be any different from any other creator? What separates someone like Taylor Swift from someone like, say, Miki? After all, the aim of the game in the creator space is cloud chasing, so where does an idol take its fork in the road? And the answer to that is optics. While many creators benefit from having a clean enough slate, Remember, idols are by design meant to be perfect in every conceivable way. Which leads us into reason number one. An actor can only be fake for so long. Everything you see is assembly line manufactured. The gimmick is to be a person that you can fanaticize almost like a god. You can contrast that to other creators like indies or the majority of other talents here in the west where the talent doesn't fit neatly into the box of an idol but is more akin to a normal person streaming out of their bedroom. They are more than happy to share a lot of their flaws in order to connect with you on a much deeper level. Their likability remains squarely in the hands of relatability. They just like me for real. However, unlike with idols, many of the things indies or fleshy reveal don't appeal to the wider audience. The product they're shilling as an idol is the perfection. The overwhelming majority of people won't want to daydream as someone living as if they're in a crack den. I understand it's for the mean, but seriously, this is revolting. The benefit of being an idol is the PR jackpot. You hit the lottery on min-maxing your likability to attract the most fans you can. But it's not as if this game plan comes without consequence. Because idol culture is relying on public imaging, it can go awry if you shatter our fans' perception of you. And that, my friends, is where it starts to get venomous. You see, if you want to craft an idol, you need paparazzi levels of stalking to set the stage for who the talent is. This level of intrusiveness on a talent's personal life makes them more public figures than even politicians in some cases. This creates something we're all too familiar with. V 
the parasocial relationship, where you know everything about the talent, from what they eat to when they sleep, but to them, you're no more than PayPiggy as 7919-2Y. While in the case of a VTuber, their personal life remains private, it's not as if the issue suddenly just disappears. Remember what we discussed earlier, everything about the talent being copy-paste. Well, the instant they do something out of character, because of course, no actor is up 100% of the time, it complicates things. Fans do feel like they can do what they want with you, because in their eyes, you belong to them. Which brings us full circle to Suisei. She faced her latest cancellation attempt because she got caught in a boyfriend scandal, which is when a VTuber woman conceals the fact that they have a relationship. Of course, it was a giant nothing burger and I refuse to waste what little brain cells I have left, so to sum it up really quickly, a Korean idol named Sukuma received a message from an account named Gintaro during stream. That's all it took. A few fans of Suisei's community began acting hysterically. Can't listen to Sui Chun's beautiful singing voice with pure feelings when I think of Sakuma's being dug by Johnny in my mouth. All because another human might be in a relationship. No matter how they portray themselves, the idol suffers because a random viewer created a false sense of a relationship in their head. Once that perception was even slightly threatened, it's too much for them to handle. To viewers, it harms the relationship because they felt like they were being led on. Without condoning, in the case of something like GFE or BFE, I can understand why some crazy person could cook up that headcanon, but in the case of Suisei, she doesn't even touch that style of content with a 10 foot long pole. And yet, this only became a thing because people believe they heard a male voice in the background of one of her videos. <laughs> I myself had to turn up the volume for this one. That being said, it's a strange phenomenon to observe. Not every one of these idol types are really treated in the same way when things like this happen. Which is reason number two. All idols aren't really held to the same standard. Idols are on a completely separate wavelength, even compared to other idols. When it comes to relationship scandals, again using scandal very loosely here, this is only really repeatable given the idol is female. Call me jaded, maybe it does happen to male creators a lot more, and people don't care enough to notice. Maybe it can happen to male ones, but being in a relationship isn't the thing that will break the camel's back, but the only times I can recall the mob trying to whack any male idol at all are almost explicitly walled to the K-pop scene. Being that again, cultural bonds in Asian spaces are a lot stronger, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to figure out why that might carry over. Just a few weeks ago, Woozy almost got run off the internet for saying he liked the anime Made in Abyss. He admitted to this, among a few others, while answering a few questions on his anime recommendations live. His fanbase did not like that. Personally, I don't see the problem in some guy liking an anime, but these are idol stands. Logic no longer applies. It's not even like it was his first recommendation either. It was listed in the middle along with a few others. I will have to point out, most of South Korea despises anything spicy related or with adult themes, so maybe that's why. Who knows? Moving on. Getting cancelled for shattering a poor viewer's reality is even rarer in the VTuber scene when it comes to men. The only time I can think of this happening at this sort of a level was some Twitter drama dealing with Fox Akuma. He was sent unsolicited photos of viewers, I'll leave it to the imagination what kind of photos those were, and had to go on declaring he didn't like it. Half of Twitter X ragged on the guy calling him names I can't say because I'm a good boy. He wasn't cancelled for these misstatements, more like mildly inconvenienced. Remember Vox, you aren't allowed to disavow fans you never cater to. Joking aside, you still gotta feel bad for the guy. He drew his line in the sand and disavowed it entirely, including deleting some pretty sus ASMR bots. But this does go to show, idols are very well held to completely separate standards for the randomest of reasons. Remember, it's okay to raise up the male VTubers. They all treat the VTuber scene as if it's a big game of Tinder. This is in part because of the content style he provides. He is a boyfriend experienced streamer after all. But similar to everyone who provides this kind of content, guys, all they're providing is the experience. BFE GFE is more likely to attract this kind of folk. But that makes no creator entirely responsible for some crazed fan who cannot separate what's real from a couple of pixels on screen. This level of fanaticism is what leads to the worst part of it all. Vox getting sent unsolicited nudies. He can't really do anything apart from closing DMs wholesale. Suisei can't stop random fans from thinking she's their girlfriend, who belongs to only them. 
Sakuma almost risked canceling not one, but two people for the crime of having Steam DMs open. Tell me, how is it bad that you like some random anime that I can find on normie tourist places? It's not even a niche one, I can order it right now on Amazon Prime Video. The point I'm highlighting here is that every single one of these events are reactionary in nature. Everything that happened is close to out of the streamer's control. You can't control whether or not a viewer falls in love with you. You can't control how your fans will react to some random interview question you thought nothing of. It's nearly impossible for the idol themselves to stop this sort of thing from happening. Yet, for some odd reason, they're still expected to suffer the consequences, which is the biggest problem with idol culture. Reason 3. You don't even have to mess around. You just find out. Heavens forbid you're a normal person like everyone else. Remember Kiryu Koko? She was a Hololive idol. Very cute and funny. As innocent as they come. Well, she opened her analytics while live because she wanted to show some appreciation for her fans around the world. Her YouTube analytics displayed China and Taiwan as two separate countries. That's all it took to spark the fire. Not only did she manage to get herself into hot water, she practically got the Tian branch booted from China and actually got them talked about on an assembly between the Chinese and Japanese parliament. So what do we learn from this? Uh, Don't read out YouTube area demographics on stream. Yeah, that'll show ya. She wanted to do nothing more than show some appreciation for her fans, which is a perfectly valid thing to do. Respect the fans that got you where you are. But what this shows us is as an idol, you can have your career reduced to nothing for something that in the moment, for most of the world, is actually a valid show of appreciation. The intentions are good, it's not particularly spicy, but you still aren't safe from something dumb happening. She went from idol to gum beneath boots in only a few moments. So that's what it means to be an idol. Immense pressure to perform at all times. Your mundane day-to-day -day life is nothing but a fleeting alter ego. You get to live through a double standard, watching your fellow creators get burned for something you did not even 10 minutes ago. You be careful. It's not who you are that matters. All that matters is how the next guy sees you.